Magical beasts in hiding it would be idle to deny that there have been occasional breaches of Clause 73 since it was first put in place. Older British readers will remember the Ilfracombe incident of 1932, when a rogue Welsh green dragon swooped down upon a crowded beach full of sunbathing muggles. Fatalities were mercifully prevented by the brave actions of a holidaying wizarding family, subsequently awarded orders of Merlin, first class. When they immediately performed the largest batch of memory charms this century on the inhabitants of Ilfracombe, thus narrowly averting catastrophe. The International Confederation of Wizards has had to fine certain nations repeatedly for contravening Clause 73. Tibet and Scotland are two of the most persistent offenders. Muggle sightings of the Yeti have been so numerous that the International Confederation of Wizards felt it necessary to station an international task force in the mountains on a permanent basis. Meanwhile the world's largest Kelpie continues to evade capture in Loch Ness and appears to have developed a positive thirst for publicity. These unfortunate mishaps notwithstanding, we wizards may congratulate ourselves on a job well done. There can be no doubt that the overwhelming majority of present-day muggles refuse to believe in the magical beasts their ancestors so feared. Even those muggles who do notice Porlock droppings or Streela trails, it would be foolish to suppose that all traces of these creatures can be hidden, appear satisfied with the flimsiest, non-magical explanation. If any muggle is unwise enough to confide in another that he has spotted a hippogriff winging its way north, he is generally believed to be drunk or a loony. Unfair though this may seem on the muggle in question, it is nevertheless preferable to being burnt at the stake or drowned in the village duck pond. So how does the wizarding community hide fantastic beasts? Luckily, some species do not require much wizarding assistance in avoiding the notice of muggles. Creatures such as the Tebow, the demi-guys and the bow truckle have their own highly effective means of camouflage and no intervention by the Ministry of Magic has ever been necessary on their behalf. Then there are those beasts that, due to cleverness or innate shyness, avoid contact with muggles at all costs, for instance, the unicorn, the moon calf, and the centaur. Other magical creatures inhabit places inaccessible to muggles. One thinks of the Acromantula, deep in the uncharted jungle of Borneo, and the phoenix. Nesting high on mountain peaks unreachable without the use of magic. Finally, and most commonly, we have beasts that are too small, too speedy or too adept at passing for mundane animals to attract a muggle's attention, chitspurfuls, billy wigs, and crops fall into this category. Nevertheless, there are still plenty of beasts that, whether willfully or inadvertently, remain conspicuous even to the muggle eye. And it is these that create a significant amount of work for the Department for the Regulation and Control of Magical Creatures. This department, the second largest at the Ministry of Magic, deals with the varying needs of the many species under its care in a variety of different ways. Habitats perhaps the most important step in the concealment of magical creatures is the creation of safe habitats. 
Muggle-repelling charms prevent trespasses into the forests where centaurs and unicorns live and on the lakes and rivers set aside for the use of merpeople. In extreme cases, such as that of the quintaped, whole areas have been made unplottable. Some of these safe areas must be kept under constant wizarding supervision, for example, dragon reservations. While unicorns and merpeople are only too happy to stay within the territories designated for their use, dragons will seek any opportunity to set forth in search of prey beyond the reservation borders. In some cases muggle repelling charms will not work, as the beast's own powers will cancel them. Cases in point are the Kelpie, whose sole aim in life is to attract humans towards it, and the Pagrabin, which seeks out humans for itself. Controls on selling and breeding the possibility of a muggle being alarmed by any of the larger or more dangerous magical beasts has been greatly reduced by the severe penalties now attached to their breeding and the sale of their young and eggs. The Department for the Regulation and Control of Magical Creatures keeps a strict watch on the trade in fantastic beasts. The 1965 ban on experimental breeding has made the creation of new species illegal. Disillusionment charms the wizard on the street also plays a part in the concealment of magical beasts. Those who own a hippogriff, for example, are bound by law to enchant the beast with a disillusionment charm to distort the vision of any muggle who may see it. Disillusionment charms should be performed daily, as their effects are apt to wear off. Memory charms when the worst happens and a muggle sees what he or she is not supposed to see. The memory charm is perhaps the most useful repair tool. The memory charm may be performed by the owner of the beast in question, but in severe cases of muggle notice. A team of trained obliviators may be sent in by the Ministry of Magic. The Office of Misinformation, the Office of Misinformation will become involved in only the very worst magical muggle collisions. Some magical catastrophes or accidents are simply too glaringly obvious to be explained away by muggles without the help of an outside authority. The Office of Misinformation will in such a case liaise directly with the Muggle Prime Minister to seek a plausible non-magical explanation for the event. The unstinting efforts of this office in persuading Muggles that all photographic evidence of the Loch Ness Kelpie is fake have gone some way to salvaging a situation that at one time looked exceedingly dangerous. Seven in his 1972 book Muggles Who Notice, Blenheim Stork asserts that some residents of Ilfracombe escaped the mass memory charm. To this day, a Muggle bearing the nickname Dodgy Dirk holds forth in bars along the south coast on the subject of a dirty great flying lizard that punctured his lilo. Eight for a fascinating examination of this fortunate tendency of muggles. The reader might like to consult the philosophy of the mundane. Why the muggles prefer not to know, Professor Mordecus Egg, Dust and Mildew, 1963. Nine, the largest department of the Ministry of Magic is the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, to which the remaining six departments are all, in some respect, answerable, with the possible exception of the Department of Mysteries. 
10 when an area of land is made unplottable. It is impossible to chart on maps.